Julius Robert Oppenheimer, credited as the father of the atomic bomb and leader of the Manhattan Project, left a legacy that still resonates well into the 21st century. Some 8 billion people live in the nuclear age he helped create. And lawmakers worldwide still face the same moral and political complications Oppenheimer wrestled with, namely how to deal with the risks posed by weapons of mass destruction. This universal threat shouldn't be taken lightly. In fact, today the world is closer to nuclear ruin than at any time since the height of the Cold War. The doomsday clock stands at 90 seconds to midnight, the closest to global catastrophe it has ever been. Russia is partly to blame, but not exclusively. China is drastically expanding its nuclear forces. North Korea is on a missile testing spree. Nuclear armed Pakistan is collapsing internally. India is continuing its nuclear buildup. And Iran is right at the edge of nuclear weapons capacity. Still more, potentially destabilizing new technologies such as AI have raised the risks to chilling new heights. Never before has the nuclear horizon been this dark. The dangers of nuclear disasters are real. And some argue nuclear weapons must be abolished before they abolish us. When I first started making geopolitical videos on YouTube, it was just something for fun. Something to help hone my skills while I was studying journalism. Things have changed since. And while I have been fortunate to find something meaningful to me, most people are not. But it doesn't have to be like that. If you're looking for a fulfilling career that makes a difference in the world, I strongly recommend checking out the sponsor of this video, 80,000 Hours. What they offer is absolutely free. 80,000 Hours is a non-profit that provides free advice to help people find fulfilling careers and tackle the world's most important and pressing problems. 80,000 Hours is the typical amount of time someone spends working over a lifetime. 40 hours per week, 50 weeks per year, for 40 years. That is a lot of time, and so your career is a major driver of your happiness, but also a major opportunity to impact the world positively. The nonprofit has conducted over 10 years of research alongside academics from Oxford University into how to find a fulfilling career that does a lot of good. Three things I like about all this. It's based on verifiable research, it looks to make a positive impact globally, and it's totally free. Go to 80,000hours.org slash Caspian and get a free copy of their in-depth career guide. Next, make a plan based on everything you've learned and put it into action. You've got nothing to lose by signing up, it's free. The nonprofit is funded by individual donors and philanthropic foundations without corporate sponsorship or advertising fees. So make use of that. Nuclear weaponry has come a long way since the first atomic bomb detonation in 1945. Much of it has been for the worse. The payloads have gotten bigger and deadlier. The maintenance budget has inflated, the infrastructure has decayed, and policymaking has become more reckless. According to the Pentagon, roughly half of America's nuclear infrastructure is over four decades old. About a quarter, in fact, dates to the Manhattan Project itself. Time and again, nuclear armed powers have dodged disasters by sheer luck. During the Cold War, early warning satellites malfunctioned. Orbital launch vehicles were mistaken for nuclear missile strikes. Military drills were taken for actual mobilization. Technical problems triggered real-time combat readiness. And live nuclear weapons were accidentally transported in flight around the United States. In point of fact, one time an aircraft carrying a hydrogen bomb crashed in North America. Fortunately, the safety mechanism prevented detonation. The point is, the record-keeping for nuclear arms is flimsy. 
the fact that the world has survived for as long as it has without a nuclear catastrophe is partly due to sheer luck. But luck can't last forever. Since the 1940s, nuclear weapons have proliferated and gotten more destructive. Russia claims two of its Sarmat intercontinental ballistic missiles can destroy the entire east coast of the United States. Meanwhile, the American-made Ohio-class submarine has enough firepower to waste over a dozen Russian cities in a single salvo. The weapons employed today are the most terrifying in world history. Still worse, policymakers are engaged in a de facto arms race. The United States plans to spend up to $1.5 trillion to overhaul its nuclear arsenal by rebuilding each leg of the nuclear triad and its supplementary infrastructure. In 30 years time, America will employ new fleets of intercontinental ballistic missiles, nuclear capable stealth bombers and nuclear armed submarines. But modernizing the nuclear arsenal has divided American politics into two camps. There are those influenced by Oppenheimer's arms control movement who believe the nuclear triad should be restrained because it is tempting nuclear annihilation. On the other hand, some argue the United States should step up its game and stop blinking at Russian saber rattling. But at a time of growing geopolitical conflict, it is not politically feasible to expect the complete elimination of nuclear weapons. In fact, with the way things are going, more and more nations are looking to join the nuclear club while existing nuclear-armed nations are seeking ways to increase their stockpiles. Today there are roughly 12,500 nuclear warheads, with about 90% of these either owned by Russia or the United States. Nearly 4,000 of these warheads remain operationally deployed, and roughly 2,000 remain on a dangerously high state of readiness primed to launch in response to an assumed attack in minutes. China, however, is planning to catch up. It has assembled over 400 warheads in just a fraction of the time it took the United States to build an arsenal of that size. Now, Chinese lawmakers look to triple their nuclear forces in the next years. By 2035, China could have 1,500 nuclear warheads ready to launch. The world has changed considerably since the Ukraine war. Battle lines are being drawn. Putin has stepped back from the last remaining nuclear arms control treaty between the United States and Russia, which is set to expire in 2026. Diplomatic negotiations have collapsed entirely. The threat of nuclear disaster has escalated so much that the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists moved the doomsday clock to 90 seconds to midnight, the closest it has ever been since its inception in 1947. So why do nations employ nuclear weapons when the risks are so high? Well, the reason is as human as it gets. When one country owns nuclear arms, other countries feel pressure to obtain them. The general belief is that the strategic benefits outweigh the risks. Nuclear weapons deter large-scale conventional attacks between major powers. They've done so in the past and continue to do so in the present. And it's not just Russia and America that want nukes. Some 40 nations rely on America's nuclear umbrella for deterrence. Taking away those bombs could destabilize and in fact result in further nuclear proliferation. But as long as any nuclear weapons remain anywhere, they are bound one day to be used. If not by design, then by human error, system error, miscalculation or misjudgment. When a nuclear bomb detonates, the temperature jumps to thousands and then millions of degrees Celsius. The heat from the explosion turns the weapon into superheated plasma, while the energy from the reaction radiates off soft X-rays that set particles of air on fire. 
Visually, the process looks like the start of a nuclear fireball. What happens after the mushroom cloud is difficult to predict, even with modern supercomputers. There exists no accurate way to measure the consequences. The general consensus is that the aftermath of a nuclear conflict would see a barren planet. Clouds of smoke would cover the hemispheres and likely block out the sun. With enough smoke, temperatures would drop below freezing, a phenomenon called nuclear winter. The affected areas would get dark, dry and cold. Crops and livestock would die and food production could crash as much as 90%. However many people would perish in the nuclear explosions, 5 more billion would die from the resulting famine. It would be the end of all life on our planet as we know it. That sounds pretty scary, but the distinction between a nightmare and reality lies in the settings. The current nuclear arsenal worldwide has the capacity to produce a nuclear winter and eradicate most of humankind. No nation or even the global system overall can face and overcome the consequences of nuclear winter. Ergo, nuclear weapons must never be used again under any circumstances. And the only assurance of the non-use of nuclear weapons is getting rid of them entirely. Since the end of the Cold War in 1991, there has been a drastic reduction in the number of nuclear warheads. It dropped from around 65,000 in the mid-1980s to around 12,500 today. Further disarmament remains difficult though. Two-thirds of the United Nations supports the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, passed in 2017. However, the nuclear-armed nations and nearly all their allies vigorously oppose any sort of disarmament. Multilateral negotiations on nuclear disarmament led by the United Nations have failed to make any advances over the last decades. The truth of the matter is that we're stuck with the possibility of nuclear winter hanging over our heads. Governments will not get rid of nuclear warheads voluntarily. There is just too much mistrust. But a problem rooted in real politic needs a solution in real politic. Instead of nuclear disarmament, nuclear minimization may be a more feasible roadmap to ensure a livable planet for future generations. First, every nuclear armed state should make an unequivocal no first declaration. Second, as many weapons as possible should be taken off their current high alert status. Third, the proportion of the world's operationally deployed nuclear weapons should be substantially reduced. Fourth, the number of nuclear warheads in existence should be cut down from 12,500 to around 2,000, with the United States and Russia reducing to no more than 500 each. This proposed number is not arbitrary. It is actually in line with the minimum recommendation for effective deterrence suggested in a 2010 study by the US Air Force. With 500 warheads each, America and Russia would still have the capacity to destroy one another many times over, but just not enough to spark a nuclear winter and drag the rest of the world down with them. Nuclear minimization is as feasible as it gets. The new film about Oppenheimer's life and legacy offers a chance to revive public debate about nuclear weapons. And it's a conversation that needs to happen urgently. Because when it comes to nuclear weapons, neglect breeds peril. And when caution falters, the instruments of death impose their ruthless resolve. I've been your host Chirvan from Caspian Report. If you like what we do, please share, comment and subscribe. If you want to support our work, consider joining our Patreon platform. The link for it will be in the description. Thank you for watching and Saul.